What's uh, the role of uh, a good prompt in all of this? See, so we mentioned that benchmarks have really uh, structured, well-formulated prompts. W what, what should a human be doing to maximize success? And what's the importance of what the humans, you wrote a blog post on, you called it uh, prompt design. Yeah, uh, I think it depends on which model you're using and all of them are slightly different and they respond differently to different prompts. But um, I think the original GPT-4 uh, and the original sort of predictable models last last year, they were quite sensitive to the prompts. And they also had a very small context window. And so we have all of these pieces of information around the code base that would maybe be relevant in the prompt. Like you have the docs, you have the files that you add, you have the conversation history. And then there's a problem like, how do you decide what you actually put in the prompt and when you have a, a limited space? And even for today's models, even when you have long context, filling out the entire context window means that it's slower. It means that sometimes the model actually gets confused and some models get more confused than others. And we have this one system internally that we call preempt, which helps us with that a little bit. Um, and I think it was built for the era before where we had 8,000 uh, token context windows. Uh, and it's a little bit similar to when you're making a website. You you sort of, you, you want it to work on mobile, you want it to work on a desktop screen, and you have this uh, dynamic information, which you don't have, for example, if you're making, like designing a print magazine, you have like, you know exactly where you can put stuff. But when you have a website or when you have a prompt, you have these inputs and then you need to format them to always work. Even if the input is really big, then you might have to cut something down. Uh, and, and, and so the idea was, okay, like let's take some inspiration. What's the best way to design websites? Well, um, the thing that we really like is, is React and the declarative approach where you, um, you use JSX in, in, in JavaScript, uh, and then you declare, this is what I want, and I think this has higher priority, or like this has higher Z index than something else. Um, and then you have this rendering engine in web design, it's, it's like Chrome, and uh, in our case, it's a preempt renderer, uh, which then fits everything onto the page. And as so you declare, it, decide what you want, and then it figures out what you want. Um, and, and so we have found that to be uh, quite helpful. And I think the role of it has has sort of shifted over time, um, where initially it was to fit to these small context windows. Now it's really useful because you know, it helps us with splitting up the data that goes into the prompt and the actual rendering of it. And so um, it's easier to debug because you can change the rendering of the prompt and then try it on old prompts because you have the raw data that went into the prompt. And then you can see, did my change actually improve it for, for like this entire eval set? So do you literally prompt with JSX? Yes, yeah. yes. So it kind of looks like React. There are components, like we have one component that's a file component and it takes in like the cursor, like usually there's like one line where the cursor is in your file. And that's like probably the most important line because that's the one you're looking at. And so then you can give priorities. So like that line has the highest priority and then you subtract one for every line that uh, is farther away. And then eventually when it's rendered, it figures out how many lines can I actually fit and it centers around that thing. That's amazing. Yeah. And you can do like other fancy things where if you have lots of code blocks from the entire code base, you could use uh, retrieval um, and things like embedding and re-ranking scores to add priorities for each of these components. So should humans, when they ask questions, also use try to use something like that? Like, would it be beneficial to write JSX in the in the problem? Or the whole idea is just should be loose and messy. I, I think our goal is kind of that you should just uh, do whatever is the most natural thing for you. Yeah, and well, then we our <laughs> job is to mm -hmm. figure out. Sure. How do we actually like retrieve the relative event things so that your thing actually makes sense? Well, this is a, sort of the discussion I had with uh, Arvin of Perplexity. Is like his whole idea is like you should let the person be as lazy yes. as you mm -hmm. want. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but like, yeah, that's a beautiful thing. But I feel like a, you're allowed to ask more of programmers, yes. right? Yes. So like, if you say just do what you want, I mean, humans are lazy. There's a kind of tension between yes. just being lazy versus yes. like provide more as uh, be prompted, almost like the system 
pressuring you or inspiring you to be articulate. Uh-huh, yeah. Not in terms of the grammar of the sentences, but in terms of the depth of thoughts that you convey inside the uh, the prompts. I think even as a system gets closer to some level of perfection, often when you ask the model for something, you just are not, not enough intent is conveyed to know what to do. And there are like a few ways to resolve that intent. One is the simple thing of having the model just ask you, I'm not sure how to do these parts based on your query. Could you clarify that? Um, I think the other could be maybe if you, there are five or six possible generations given the uncertainty present in your query so far, why don't we just actually show you all of those and let you pick them? How hard is it to for the model to choose to speak, talk back? Sort of versus generally, that's a, that's hard. It's sort of like yeah. how to deal with the uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Do I do I choose to ask for more information to uh, reduce the ambiguity? So I mean, one of the things we we do is um, it's like a recent addition is try to suggest files that you can add. So and while you're typing, uh, one can guess what the uncertainty is, and maybe suggest that like. You know, maybe maybe you're writing your API, and uh, we can guess using the commits uh, that you've made previously in the same file that the client and the server is super useful. And uh, there's like a hard technical problem of how do you resolve it across all commits? Which files are the most important given your current prompt? And we're still sort of. Uh, initial version is ruled out, and I'm sure we can make it much more accurate. Uh, it's 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 very experimental. But then the idea is we show you like, do you just want to add this file, this file, this file also to tell you know the model to edit those files for you? Uh, because if if you're maybe you're making the API, like you should also edit the client and the server that is using the API and the other one resolving the API. And so that will be kind of cool. As both there's the phase where you're writing the prompt and there's before you even click enter, maybe we can help resolve some of the uncertainty. 